In pressure control, we're going to be talking about um, flooding the condenser to um, keep the head pressure up. This is a little bit and quite a bit different than uh, the fan cycling controls. And you'll see these more often further north, although here in Florida, I have seen them with ice machines. So you need to be familiar with them. So you use condenser flooding to keep the head pressure regulated. And it's the same as overcharging a system. So you know when you overcharge a system, uh, in an um, air conditioning system, it raises that head pressure. So condenser flooding emulates that. So you use an HPR valve, uh, head pressure regulating valve, flood control valve, headmaster. I've all I've heard it called all three th of those terms. And what it does, it it restricts the flow out of the condenser. It also backs up refrigerant into the co the condenser, which effectively makes a smaller condenser, even though physically it's not, raises the head pressure and it bypasses some high gas, hot gas to from the uh, discharge of the compressor into the receiver and that keeps the head pressure higher as well. So let's take a look at how this works. So here is a head HPR valve, head pressure regulating valve. It's got a dome up here with 180 PSIG rating and 180 PSIG of pressure. This is the liquid coming from the condenser. This is the discharge line from the compressor and this is your liquid line that goes to the receiver and ultimately to the metering device. So during normal operating conditions in the summertime, not low ambient temperature ratings, the liquid from the condenser is at a high enough pressure and it's above 180 PSIG that it opposes this the force of the dome so the pressure from the liquid closes this seat up right up here so the liquid comes out and shoots right through to the receiver out to the metering, metering device and it's operating just like a system without the head pressure control valve but when the ambient temperature falls, the discharge pressure falls, and the liquid from the and the pressure from the um, the liquid pressure falls as well. So when it fall when the liquid pressure falls below 180 psig, the dome pressure pushes down on this um, disc and opens up the head pressure regulating valve to allow the hot gas that is just discharged from the compressor to start to bleed through here so we have a mixture of liquid coming from the condenser and hot gas coming from the discharge side of the compressor going out to the receiver so what this does is is heats up the refrigerant and causes the pressure of the refrigerant to rise and it also puts that hot gas on top of the receiver which increases the pressure of the receiver which causes the um, head pressure to rise. So what will happen is as the ambient temperature fluctuates up and down this, this seat will move up and down and allow more or less hot gas from the discharge of the compressor to be dumped on top of the uh, refrigerant in the receiver. The other thing that it does is it backs up some of this refrigerant, doesn't allow as much liquid through because we're we're closing this this valve down a little bit so it backs up liquid into the condenser which reduces the size of the condensing surface in the condenser and that also aids in raising the head pressure. So let's take a look at this again a little more simple and with the complete circuit. So we have our comp compressor, hot discharge gas comes through the condensing unit uh, into the HPR valve, passes right through because our outdoor ambient is 80 we have our head pressure is up where it belongs into the receiver 
down through the liquid line into the metering device into the evaporator coil and around we go so essentially in this circuit the um, HPR valve is really not a factor whatsoever but when our ambient temperature falls below 60 degrees the our uh, discharge pressure decreases and the pressure coming from the condenser decreases and it opens up this HPR valve a little bit. So we now have hot vapor coming through the condensing coil and passing through the HPR valve. We also have some hot vapor that goes directly through the HPR valve bypassing the condenser and it mixes with this liquid refrigerant and it pumps it into the receiver. Now it pumps it into the top of the receiver. It's full of liquid refrigerant so the pressure increases and temperature increases up here pushes that uh, increases the pressure of the liquid and pushes a solid column of liquid back down to your uh, metering device. And the other thing that it does is it backs up that refrigerant so because this is valve is closed down a little bit it floods the condenser so we have some liquid refrigerant backed up here in the uh, condensing unit and you know if it backs up to right here effectively it has cut the c condensing surface down in half which also aids in raising the head pressure for the system pretty simple ingenious device it was just hard to figure out when you're when you look at it and and you haven't been exposed to it before All right, we're going to stop right here, break this video, make sure that you review this and understand what happens with the HPR valve when we get down below low ambient temperatures. Then we'll talk a little bit about how we're going to check to make sure everything is working properly with that H, the HPR.